Our text here in 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, and the 10th verse says this, for the love of money is the root of all evil. What's the root of all kinds of evil? Money? No, not money. Have you heard people misquote it? And say, yeah, like the Bible said, money's the root of all evil. Well, no, the Bible didn't say anywhere that money was the root of all evil. What did it say? Love. You say, well, money, the love of money, same thing. No, no, it's not the same thing at all. Did you understand you can have no money and be full of covetousness? And all you do is think about money and how you need money and how you want money. Having money and loving money is not the same thing at all. Or could it be possible that you got a lot of money, but it don't mean much to you? Could that be possible too on the other end of the spectrum? You got all kind of stuff but you'd give any of it wherever the Lord told you to any time. You'd liquidate. You might have a fine house and fine stuff, but the Lord tell you to move, you sell it tomorrow. You're gone. Could you have a lot of stuff, but not love it? Love God. Be thankful for it. Enjoy it, but it's just stuff. Nobody takes any of it with them or ever has or ever will. One fellow said, you never saw a hearse pulling a U-Haul. <laughs> Be no need. So really, all the stuff in the world is just, no matter what we might have under our hand, we say we own it, but really we just use it for a little while because none of it can last. The Bible said everything down here, the elements, everything's gonna melt with fervent heat. Yes, sir. I know when I was in Ramah several years ago, I heard a couple of first year students talking about some things and one fellow supposed to have been testifying but he's really just bragging on all the stuff he had and you're really just trying to act superior to the other guys that were barely making it. And um, finally, one of them kind of exasperated. He said, well, whoop de doo He said, your pile of ashes will be bigger than mine. Because <laughs> that's where it's all going. Every car, every house, every piece of clothes and jewelry, every property, every building, everything. Ashes. So no matter what we have, it's only good for temporary use, right? And really the only way it, it really matters or makes any difference is if it can help people with it, right? Well, we looked into this. He said the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after, coveted after, that's another way of saying loved it. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So is it the money that's the problem or the covetousness for the money, the love for the money? Like we said, you could be full of covetousness and have nothing. So with that in mind, the title of our series, as we've said, is this, would Jesus wear a Rolex? They <laughs> say, what does one have to do with it? A lot. Yes, sir. And as we go on, it, it'll become clearer and clearer. Now, we've already covered a lot of ground on this, so if this is your first time with us in this series, the previous uh, sessions are, uh, teachings are out in the Word Supply at no charge. You can download them in their entirety from off the internet, and it'll help you to catch up with us, But because we're building on what we've already laid, but would Jesus wear a Rolex? 
<laughs> Some people would answer very adamantly, no. No, he would not, and neither should you. And there are some people that feel quite strong about people that get, uh, well, I should say people that are angry. They're angry. They particularly get angry if preachers have much prosperity. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? There are people that get irate. And a lot of times in their mind, they're saying, well, Jesus would never have anything like that. Jesus would never drive anything like that. Jesus would never live in anything like that. Well, we covered uh, on our first session a whole lot of what Jesus did and didn't do and why he did it and didn't do it. So you need to get that if you're still asking those questions. But let's go on today. Go with me, please, to Matthew 7. And let's talk about what's going on. We, we went into some detail about who it was that said this expensive gift that was given to their minister should have been sold and given to the poor. <laughs> right? In the Bible, there's a story about a woman taking a super expensive thing and giving it to her preacher, right? And then there was one who said, this should have been sold and given to the poor instead. And a lot of people quote that like it is a quote from Jesus, don't they? Oh, that should have been given to the poor. They shouldn't spend all that on that. They shouldn't do all that on this. They shouldn't have something that expensive. They shouldn't have something that, that, that's extravagant, that's just excessive. That's, they should put that in the gospel. They should put that for the poor. Did Jesus say that? No. It should have been given to the poor. No. Not to, who said that? Jesus. Judas said that. So these folk are in some bad company already, aren't they? Bad company. And um, I, I want us to examine this. The Bible said, Judas said, this should have been sold and given to the poor. Is he judging Jesus? Is he? Yes, he is. What, how's he judging Jesus? He's saying, you shouldn't have received that. You shouldn't have let her do that. You should have taken that and given it to the poor. You don't care enough about the poor. You care too much about yourself and not enough about the poor. and I care more about the poor than you do. <laughs> Was he doing that? Yes. Was it true? Jesus had sent him out to help the poor repeatedly, right? When he got up that time to leave them and betray Jesus, they thought he might be going out to help the poor because Jesus sent him to do that repeatedly. And the Bible said he didn't say it because he cared for the poor. He said it because he was a thief. But what I want you to see is, is he judging Jesus? I said, how would anybody ever judge Jesus? Same way they judge people today. Exactly the same. And when you say they should, they should have done this, that's too much. Oh, that's, that's ridiculous. That's just extravagant. Oh, that's just excessive. You're saying I care more about the poor than you do. I care more about the gospel than you do. 
And if you say such a thing, I want you to know it's coming back to you. Your words will be brought back to you by the Lord. If you find fault and you criticize somebody else's prosperity and their possessions, their wealth, you will never have it. And I want you to have it. I said, I want you to have it. You say, well, I don't care. I don't want it. Well, then give it away. (laughs) Give it away. Be a blessing. Nobody said you had to keep it all. (laughs) I want you to have it. I want you to go pay cash for a new car and drive it off the lot. I want you to live in a nice house. I want you to have everything you got paid for. I want you to be able to put your grandkids through college if you want to. Why shouldn't you? Does it help God for you to be poor? It don't help me. (laughs) Who does it help? Who would it help for me to be broke? Would it help you? How would it help people for this church to be broke? For us to be poor? Does it make us more holy? Does it please God? I mean, if it does, let's do it. If it's going to save people for me to be poor, let's get poor. If it's going to help people for this church to be broke, let's do it. It doesn't help God. It doesn't help the kingdom. It doesn't please the Lord. It doesn't make you spiritual or holy. It just makes you poor. Now, on the other hand, having a ton of money doesn't make you rich. Doesn't make you truly prosperous. And doesn't make you acceptable to God either, right? Takes a lot more than money to be really prosperous, doesn't it? The most valuable things in life you can't buy. There's a lot of deception. There's a lot of confusion in these areas. And I don't want you to be kept out of nice things. I don't want you to criticize and condemn others for their stuff and keep yourself from ever having it. And I don't want you to judge others and you wind up being judged. In uh, Matthew 7, are you there? Matthew 7, verse 1. Jesus is talking. Red letters. Right? Right? And what did Jesus say? Judge not that you be not judged. Everybody say that out loud with me a time or two. Judge not that you be not judged. One more time. Judge not that you be not judged. Do you want to keep from being judged? Is is it a big deal that you not be judged? Oh, what what happens when you get judged? When you get judged means when you are in need, you get no grace. No grace. And instead of being protected, the destroyer is allowed access to you. Are other ways of describing being judged. Remember 1 Corinthians 11 talks about if we will judge ourselves, we won't be judged. But when we are judged, what happens? We're turned over to the destroyer. He's allowed access into our lives. Is it important that you don't get judged? Yes, sir. Oh, brother. And so what would keep you from being judged? We see one thing, judge yourself. But then what else? Do not Judge others. Now, most Christians know this verse. (laughs) And most folk could go, oh, no, no, don't judge, don't judge. And yet they're doing it almost every day. When you judge another, keep reading. Judge not that you be not judged. Keep reading. What's the next verse say? For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. You'll be judged with what? With the same judgment you judged. 
and with what measure you meet, exactly the way you measured them, it shall be measured to you again. I'm, I'm believing for, I, I've, I've gotten some new light on this I, more than I've ever had in my life, just in the last couple of weeks. And I'm believing for light to come throughout the church in this area. I do not believe most Christians are aware of this like they need to be. Aware of what? That when you judge somebody else, those very words are going to be brought back to you by the Lord, he's gonna hold you to them. To what you said they should do, he's gonna judge you for doing or not doing. Friend, it is extremely serious. Because when you judge, you're saying, I have light. I know what is right. Well, that's what we're judged by. You're judged by what you see and by what you know. Remember Jesus in John 11 talked about this. He said, uh, I'm come that they that see not might see and they that see might be made blind. And the Pharisees said, what, are we blind too? He said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see. So your sin remains. When you're saying, oh, I see it. They're poor stewards of their finances. Oh, I see it. They're so wasteful. Oh, I see it. They're just blowing money on that and they could give that to the poor and they should give that to the poor. Oh, I see it. They should be putting that money in the gospel. Then you have said what you see. You will be accountable for what you say you saw. Not for what they do, but for what you do. If we were smart, <laughs> I said, if we were smart, when people said, what do you think about what they're doing this? You'd say, hey, I am not the judge. And you'd be thinking to yourself, and I do not want to wear any words I might say about them. I don't want them being brought back to me. Now, am I making this up? Am I saying something that's not said here? No, listen to the scripture. You don't have to turn there, but listen to it. Luke 19 and 22. Jesus said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you. And he goes on to say, you knew this? Then why didn't you do this? Matthew 12 and 37, he said, by your own, these are Jesus' words again, by your words you'll be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Oh, friends, both in this life and in the judgment seat of Christ, do you know what you're gonna hear? Do you know what you're gonna hear? as to whether you're judged or not judged, what you're judged by and how you're judged. Do you know what you're gonna hear? You're gonna hear what you said. Yes, sir. You're gonna hear what came out of your mouth. Yes, sir. It's what you're gonna be judged by. So when it comes to others, what business is it of yours right. or mine? Are you the judge? I'm not the judge. So what about what they did with their money? Hey, it's their money. It's between them and God. Right? What about what they've got? Hmm? What about what they did? What about what they didn't do? Hey, I'm not the judge. Now friend, if you got, if you got any smarts, you'll listen to this and you'll button that lip and you'll quit that talk. Because everything you say they should be doing, God is judging you by it. Are you doing it? Go with me, if you would, to the uh, book of Romans and the second chapter. He said,
said, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whoever you are that judges. Is there justification for judging? Is there a set of circumstances in which you have a right to judge? No, there's no excuse for judging ever. Because keep reading. For wherein you judge another, what do you do when you judge somebody else? You just condemned yourself. Why? Because you that judges doest the same things. Now here's a phrase that, that get it in your mind, let it get settled in you. Judges are not doers. Doers are doers. If somebody really cares about the poor, you know what they're doing? They ain't harping about somebody's car. That's right. They're helping the poor. Yes, sir. Are y'all with me? Amen. And if somebody had $90 billion and they gave $100,000 to the poor, they're just glad they gave something to the poor. Because they care about the poor. Now, the more we get into this, you're going to see, man, there is such hypocrisy. There is such deceit in all this stuff that people talk. But people that are always hollering about what other people should be doing, you can write it down. They are not doing it. Because judges are not doers. That's not my idea, my opinion. I'm reading Bible. Right? When you judge somebody else, what did you just do? You just condemned yourself to be judged. Why? Because the one that judges is doing the same thing. Read it out loud now. Don't, don't think I misread it. The last part of the verse said what? For thou that judges, what? Doest the same things. True or not true? God will be true. Go to James, please. James 4 and verse 11. Speak not evil one of another brethren. When the Bible says don't speak evil one of another, what should you do? You should not say anything bad and evil about anybody else. He that speaks evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law, but if you judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge. Say it out loud again. Judges, judges are, not doers. are not doers. They should give more. Sure sign you're not a giver. They should pray more. Sure sign you're not a prayer. They should witness more. <laughs> you just condemned yourself. They, they, should, they should put more of that money in the gospel. They shouldn't spend so much on that building. Those words are going to be applied to you about what you spent on your curtains. You thought you were talking about them, but those, you're going to hear those words again one day that came out of your mouth. They spent too, they, they could have sold that airplane and put that money in the gospel. And yet you never sold a car and put it in the gospel. And you will be judged by it. And you'll be asked, why didn't you? You said that's what people should do. You said you knew it. You said you saw it. You said you knew it was right. So why didn't you do it? We will be judged by the light we say we see. And when you're judging somebody else, you're saying, I got light. I see it clear. They oughtn't have done that. They should have done this. And you think it's about them, but it's going to be held right back up to you. You'll be judged by what you said they should have done. You know, this is enough to make you watch your mouth the rest of your life if, if, if you believe it. Huh? 
Should be. Should be. What about their car, their house, their money, their this, their that? What about it? Come on. Huh? Hey. Hey. <laughs> That's between them and God. Right? <laughs> What they should do with their money, what they should have done, hey, nothing to me. Nothing. Nothing to me. Now, why don't more people know this? Why are people still running their mouths? We're not talking about a few isolated cases here and there. All over the place. People are just doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this. I don't think they should have done that. I, they How could they do that? I'd never. Judging, judging, judging. What did he say? Verse 12. He said, if, you, if you're judging, you're not a doer, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who's able to save and destroy. Who are you that judges another? Who's the judge? Let me give you a clue. It's not you. <laughs> Who's the judge? There's one judge. Not, not two, not three, not four. There's only one judge. One. Let him handle it. It ought to be a relief to us. Right? Right? All this stuff, all these people are doing, what they got, what they don't, what they do, what they don't. I don't have to judge it. I'm not to judge. Ain't my job. I can just go, hey, not my job. That's between them and God. Not my job. Well, what do you think? I've had, pe I've had people take me out to, to lunch, ministers, under false pretenses so that at the proper time they could ask me, what do you think about what brother so-and-so has done? And they looked at me surprised sometimes when I say, I, I don't. <laughs> what do you mean you don't? <laughs> I don't think about it. <laughs> well, I, I know you've got an opinion. I, I, I don't let myself have an opinion. Amen. Oh, come on now, I know, I, know you, uh, I know you have a thought. No, you're not listening. <laughs> Because I have found out that whatever I say, if I open my mouth and say something about them, I'm going to wear it. I'm going to be held up to it. I'm going to be judged by it. So I got nothing to say except I love them. I want to see them do good. And if it is a problem, I ain't to judge. It's between them and the Lord. Let's pray for them. If they need to see something, Lord, help them see it. If they need to get it right, Lord, I said if, 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 <laughs> if, <laughs> if. Because I don't know what they see and what they don't see, and God judges them according to what they see. Sin is according to what you see, the light you have. Who's the judge? Not you. Right? Who's the judge? Look at somebody and say, not you. Not you. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> now, think about this. Uh, if this is true, and it's got to be because the Bible says it is, that people who are judging others are not doing it themselves. If that's true, and it's gotta be, we read more than one verse that said it is. How can they so brazenly do it? How can they so brazenly and unashamedly say, they should sell that and give it to the poor, they should put that in the gospel, and they're not doing a thing. How can they so brazenly and unashamedly do it? Judge it and say all those things. It's happening all over. Yes. How can they do it when they're, they're not doing it themselves? It's because they consider themselves exempt. 
that it doesn't apply to them. I mean, it's easy enough for a lot of folks to talk about others, what they should do with their big house and their expensive car and their jet when they have none of them. And never expect to have any of them. Then they believe it could never apply to me. Oh, it can never apply to me because I don't have any of those things and I never will so it doesn't apply. Now that's one reason we said whatever you condemn, you cannot have. You never will have. <clears throat> but why would people be so brazen and unashamed to judge and they're not doing it? Here's a couple of reasons. I've, I've heard people say this. Well, I'm not a preacher. I don't claim to be a preacher. So, what does that mean? Well, preachers are not are, are supposed to be poor. <laughs> you know, uh, on a, on an internationally broadcast uh, talk show. I mean, if I called it, you'd know it. I mean, it's world known. This has been a couple of years ago. They were talking about some things, and they were really raking this one preacher over because he had a new Lexus car. I think he had two of them. And oh man, they were taking him to town about it, you know, how terrible that was. And one fellow said, yeah, you know, it's like the Bible said, they're supposed to lay down with the lepers. <laughs> I'm not making this up. <laughs> he said, it's like the Bible said, they supposed to, these preachers are supposed to lay down with the lepers. And the rest of the people around the table went, yeah. <laughs> Lay down with the lepers. Now there, there are folks that are convinced preachers are supposed to be poor. That's like qualifications. For the ministry, you're supposed to be poor. Well, I never read that memo. I never took any vow of poverty. Nor did Paul nor did Peter, nor did Moses, or Abraham, Amen. or David. Solomon sure didn't. <laughs> and, then, right, and the list goes on and on. Come on. Yes, sir. Well, there are people that believe you have to, to be in the ministry. Well, I let them do it. I'm not a part of that. That's not what I believe. Be true to what you believe. If you believe in being poor, be poor. But I don't believe in it. Do you? <laughs> I'm not a preacher. Well, uh, scriptures that so many times people like to quote and talk about, I want you to listen to them. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Who does that apply to? Everybody. Any man. Is that a preacher verse? No. Any man. Luke 14, 33, Jesus said, likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Did you say he cannot be my preacher? No. no, he cannot be my disciple. How about the rich young ruler? The Lord said, what you need to do is, is liquidate and give to the poor, give everything to the poor and come follow me. Was he a preacher? No. no. Zacchaeus said, I'm gonna give half of my goods to the poor. The Lord didn't say, that's not enough. No, 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 no. It's all or nothing. <laughs> no. No, he said, this day salvation has come to this man's house. Was he a preacher? No, these are not preacher verses. Whatever you like, try to believe about a preacher, it applies to you. Yes, sir. And certainly we've already talked about it. If you judge a preacher or anybody else, you're gonna wear it. Yes. You're gonna be judged by that, exactly. 
People, people think it's okay to judge others even though you're not doing anything about it yourself because they're exempt for these different reasons because I'm not a preacher. There's quite a few people that are just deaf on preachers and Christians having any prosperity. They are atheists. They're unbelievers. They say, well, I don't claim to be a Christian. We don't claim to be a church. But y'all are supposed to do this, and you're not supposed to have that, and you're supposed to do that. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Well, I'm not a Christian. Then you got lots bigger problems than my car. <laughs> you about to hit hell. <laughs> and my house and car is the least of your problems, but you better get real. And why should we believers let unbelievers tell us how believers should live? People who don't go to church tell us how to run a church and what a church should do. They never been, they're never coming. <laughs> what is it to them? If we all want to spend a million dollars on a big hat. Yeah. <laughs> if we want to spend 10 million on a big pinata and hang it up in the big, in the top of the church, what is it to them? We <laughs> say, well, it ain't right. We say, we believe in pinatas. <laughs> this government protects the rights of other groups to believe in the devil, to worship the devil, to practice witchcraft, yeah. to worship false gods, pray to rocks. Yeah. And we can't believe in a God that'll prosper you yeah. and heal you. Yeah. Maybe they don't agree with it. Believe what you want. That's right. But don't tell us Amen. what to believe. Right. Don't impose your belief or unbelief, as the case may be, on us. Don't tell us what we can't believe and what we can't do with our money. If we all want to have Rolls Royces parked in the, in the parking lot, what is it to them? Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, well, people think it is. Oh, they think it is. Hey, they're quite upset about things. But uh, I don't think they really know why. Before we get through, I think you're gonna see more and more why. There's revelation we can't, we can't get to today, but man, keep coming. And uh, the Lord, I'm telling you, he's ministered to me some things. Dear me. I, I'm staying up all night and writing pages and pages and pages and pages and glory to God. I'm seeing some things. It's about truth. It's about who God really is. And it's about a whole lot of lying that the devil has done for years and confusing and things that's just holding people back. I don't know if you realize how much of this stuff is still lingering on in people's minds and thinking that go to churches like ours. I'm not, not, not talking about people on the outside. I'm talking about people like you and me. People can just bring up something and, and folks like you and me start apologizing making excuses, trying to say, oh, well, I, I got it on sale. And, and oh, and you know, well, we have done some things for the poor now. And, and why are you even talking? Why are you ashamed? It's because you believe wrong. You think wrong. Let's get renewed. Let's get free. Let's think right. And let's be blessed. And let's do more for the poor than we've ever done. Because we're more blessed than we've ever been. Yeah. And let's do more for the gospel than we've ever done. Yeah. Why? You won't do it being broke? Yeah. 
Did you find 2 Corinthians 8? Before we read it, let me preface it with this. How can people be so bold to judge others when they themselves do nothing? How can they deceive themselves that it doesn't apply to me if I had their money? It doesn't apply to me because I'm not a preacher. It doesn't apply to me because I'm not a Christian. It doesn't apply to me because I don't have much money. Now this is a big one here. It doesn't apply to me because I don't have that kind of money. If I had that kind of money, I'd help the poor. If I had that kind of money, I'd do things for the gospel. If I had that kind of money, man, I'd pay off churches. Boy, I'd send missions projects. I'd underwrite this. If I had that kind of money, you know what you'd do if you had that 100 million? According to Jesus, whom I completely believe, you would do exactly the same thing with that 100 million that you are doing with what you've got right now. True or not? Did Jesus say, he that's faithful in that which is least is faithful in much. He that is unjust and unfaithful in that which is least is unjust and unfaithful in, in the great, in the much. And this is a lie, I'm telling you, that in different forms and degrees has filtered into millions of Christians' thinking and consciousness and belief. They think they are exempt from all these responsibilities because they don't have much. There are millions of Christians that don't tithe. They don't give. And they think it's fine that they don't because they're poor. And they don't have much. And they sure the Lord understands because he knows. And that all these things, and they, they, they feel just perfectly free to judge other people about what they have and what they should do and, and, and talk about what they'd do if they had all this money. But the truth is, in judging, they are condemning themselves. And they are not doing what they are saying others should do. Should the poor give? Yes. Should the poor tithe? Yes. Should they? Yes. Should the poor help others? Yes. There's a lot of folk don't, don't believe this. Oh, no, no, no. The rich owe it to the poor. What verse is that? What scripture did you get that out of? How many remember the poor widow's offering? Jesus watched the offerings. And the Bible said he watched how much they put in. Wonder if he still does that. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he ever watched an offering and watched what people put in, he still does it. He watched what each one of them put in. Now, what would you think about a preacher that did that today? <laughs> I came by with a bucket, said, so let me look at that. <laughs> uh, okay, let me see. Yeah, how much? What's that say? <laughs> oh, people to think that's, a, oh, oh, oh. And yet, I would be acting like Jesus. I would be imitating what Jesus did. I'd have scripture for it. Acting like Jesus. He watched and he looked specifically at how much each one, I guess he had to be pretty close, didn't he? They came by and he looked over. Okay. <laughs> and the poor widow came and threw in two mites, tiny coins. I tried to figure out what it might be worth in today's money. I came up with maybe 30 cents. And uh, Jesus stopped, interrupted the, what was going on. He said, I want everybody to know. This woman right here, 
has outgiven everybody here today. She sure didn't do it in amount, but she did it in percentage. So the Lord does look at what people give, but not just at the amount. He looks at the percentage and he looks at the heart, but he does look at the percentage. He doesn't just look at what you gave, he looks at what you got left. And that determines how much you gave, not the amount, but how much you had left. And that puts us all on the same footing. Doesn't it? And it, it causes so that one person does not have the ability to give more than the other. In the eyes of God, people say, well, I, if I had a lot, I would do a lot more. In the eyes of God, you've got exactly the same ability to give as they do. If you only got a dollar and they got a billion, in God's eyes, you got the same ability. Because they could give part of what they got, they could give half of it, they could give three quarters of it, they could give all of it, they could give none of it, you can do exactly the same. You can give none, all, half, quarter, 75, you can do exactly the same thing. And if there's anybody that should have been exempt from giving, wouldn't this woman have been a good candidate? Yes, sir. Poor, widow, no husband, no, no provider with a job. We don't know if she's got kids to feed. And if like some people teach, this would have been the perfect opportunity for Jesus to rush in there and go, no, no, no. No, sister, get your money back out. Here, some of you rich guys, come over here. Give this woman some money instead of putting it here in the church. And here, I'm gonna give you some money, dear. You'd have to add to the Bible to say he gave her any money. And he said nothing to them, the rich, about giving her any money. And he did not say anything to her that she didn't need to give. Why? She did need to give. The poor should tithe. The poor should give. Yes. The poor should sow and help others. That's how the poor stop being the poor. Yes. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Yes. It's how you get out of being poor. How many think even if Jesus didn't get in his pocket or they didn't get in their pocket, how many believe God met her need? He didn't have to do it through any of them there in that room that day. How many think God could have been setting some things in motion for her groceries, for her house, for other things before she ever got back to the house? You know how God is. But this stuff about, well, you know, man, I'm barely making it. I can't tithe. God don't expect me to tithe. I can't give. God don't expect me to give. You are so wrong. And to act like you are exempt from doing things you say others should do because they have a lot more amount of money than you, you don't understand how Jesus thinks. He doesn't look at amounts. He looks at percentage. And he looks at heart. Prove it again here in 2 Corinthians. Are you there? 2 Corinthians, the eighth chapter. I know some of this is not all laughing and jumping the pew, but uh, this is good. I'm telling you, this is helping us. I said, this is helping us. How will this help us? Well, friend, if you don't uh, condemn and criticize stuff, you can have it. I said, you can have it. And if you don't judge others, you're not gonna be judged, which means you're gonna get grace when you need it. You're gonna get help. Uh, the, oh, the door's not gonna be open to the destroyer in your life. And you're just gonna generally be a happier and nicer to be around person. <laughs> just, just all around in a general way. Second Corinthians and the eighth chapter. <clears throat> Nobody wants to hear griping. 
Nobody wants to hear you gripe about somebody else's stuff and somebody else's money and what they ought to do and what they shouldn't have done. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody. 2 Corinthians 8 and 12. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has and not according to that he has not. I mean not that other men be eased and you burdened. Does God want us impoverished in the process of helping others? Does he want us burdened in order to help others? No, he does not. And how is our gift accepted? Not according to what we don't have. There's no need never talking about what you don't have. When it comes to giving, when it comes to tithing, never bring up what you don't have. Because to God, it's not an issue. He don't want to hear about what you don't have. He knows exactly what you don't have. What's he interested in? You're only being considered and held accountable for what you have. That's it. You can't do stuff with what you don't have. But if you want to show God what you would do with 100 million, you got the opportunity right now. This week. Right? Oh God, if I had 100 million, show him. You can prove to God what you'd do with 100 million with $100. You can show him. Talk is cheap in this area. Show him. And if you honestly do it and sincerely do it, not just you know trying something, but day in, day out, God will see your heart and you will be approved and you'll begin to handle larger amounts. And if you keep doing the same thing with larger amounts, and simply it means you keep obeying him. You just keep obeying him. Doing what he says, where he says, when he says. You keep doing it. It'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, Phyllis and I can testify personally. We started off in fives and tens years ago. And now it's into big amounts. Not as big as it's going to be. Amen. Demonstrate to him. He said, listen to this. He said, for the, the NIV, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. The acceptability of the gift, the Jewish Bible says, will be measured by what you have, not by what you don't have. The easy to read says this. If you want to give, can you put it up on the screen? If you want to give, your gift will be accepted. <laughs> your gift will be judged by what you have, not by what you don't have. How many believe this? Should the poor tithe? Yes. Yeah. Should the poor give? Yes. Yeah. Should the poor obey God and sow to others yes. and help others? Yes. Yeah. What's the result of that? The poor can become no longer poor and can become rich. Because you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, so very rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Let me lead you in this prayer. Say it if you mean it, if you're sincere about it. Father God, I believe your word. Every part of it's true. Forgive me any times I have spoken about other people what they should do, what they shouldn't do. It's none of my business. I'm not the judge. And I don't want to be judged by that. I repent. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. I judge myself right now so that I won't be judged. I ask you for mercy that those words 
not be held against me, that I not be judged by them if I judge myself right now. I ask for mercy. I ask for grace. And I purpose to show others mercy and grace and not judge.